Describe and evaluate different types of long-term memory. There are eight marks available for the question. We can see that from the mark scheme here, that to achieve in the top mark band, so to achieve seven or eight marks, the understanding of different types of long-term memory should be evident and well explained. And then there should be a discussion or an evaluation of types of long-term memory, and this should be strong and in-depth. So again, looking for well-explained, detailed information. There should be a clear structure to the response and technical language should be used throughout. Because the question clearly asks you to describe and evaluate, we know that both AO1 knowledge and AO3 evaluation marks will be available. There will be four AO1 knowledge marks and four AO1 evaluation. We know that the three types of long-term memory are episodic memory, semantic memory and procedural memory. So there needs to be a clear description of these three. There then needs to be an evaluation and a discussion around whether these are in distinct separate memory stores or not. Let's take a look at this model response. Episodic memory involves a recall of personal life events, including details such as who, what, where, when and how. It is characterised by conscious recall, forming a significant part of one's autobiographical memory. Semantic memory includes general knowledge, facts, figures, tastes, smells and concepts. This type of memory contributes to our understanding of the world, involving both emotional and non-emotional information. Procedural memory is associated with skills and abilities, involving the unconscious recall of movements and procedures. It supports the development of motor skills and is crucial for carrying out tasks without conscious effort. Evidence from case studies, such as the case of Clive Waring, supports the notion of different long-term memory stores. Clive Waring suffered damage to his hippocampus and amygdala, leading to impaired episodic memory while retaining semantic memory. His case highlights distinct memory systems, providing valuable evidence for differentiating memory stores. However, relying on case studies like Clive Waring has drawbacks. Brain injuries vary and the lack of control over pre and post injury variables complicates drawing conclusions that can be generalised to wider populations. The uniqueness of each case limits generalizability, making it challenging to establish clear cause and effect relationships between specific brain regions and memory types. Conflicting evidence also adds complexity to the idea of separate memory stores. Buckner and Peterson, 1996, found left prefrontal cortex involvement in semantic memory, contrasting Tolving's 1994 findings of the opposite lateralization. These inconsistencies raise questions about the uniformity of memory storage suggesting that factors beyond strict compartmentalisation may influence memory organisation. AO1 material can be seen highlighted in blue, and AO3 material can be seen highlighted in pink. The understanding of types of long-term memory is clear and well explained. The response provides clear definitions and characteristics of episodic, semantic and procedural memory. Each type of memory is outlined concisely and shows a real strong grasp of the subject. The response clearly explores each memory type, providing the additional details that go beyond just a definition. For example, in the case of episodic memory, the inclusion of specific details like who, what, where, when and how adds depth to the explanation. Each of the evaluative paragraphs starts with a clear point, introducing the main idea, the main strength or limitation. For example, in the first paragraph, the point is about the strength of the evidence from case studies and particularly the Clive Waring case. This establishes a key point for the evaluation and then goes on to explore and explain this further. In this paragraph, the explanation elaborates on Clive Waring's case, highlighting the different types of long-term memory observed in his condition. This expansion ensures a thorough explanation of the point and provides the necessary depth and context. The final stage of an evaluative paragraph is a consequence that presents the implications or the outcomes of the discussed point. In this paragraph, the consequence is the strength of the evidence for differentiating memory stores. The paragraph effectively draws a conclusion from the information presented, linking the evidence to the broader discussion of long-term memory type. This same structure, point, explain, consequence, is then repeated in the following two evaluative paragraphs. The response is cohesive and it has a smooth flow between the different types of long-term memory, the AO1 material, into the evaluation points AO3. It moves clearly from outlining different memory types to discussing the strengths and limitations. Technical language is used throughout the response and is accurate. 
It uses technical terms for the three types of long-term memory and also for brain areas such as hippocampus and amygdala and lateralisation. This really demonstrates a strong understanding of the topic and the psychological language associated with it.